So I, I think we're going to open up the questions for a couple of minutes here if anybody has anything they want to ask. Oh, there. What, what, what's your take on the future of the Kickstarter ecosystem? Is it, is it clogged up already or is it going to grow? Can it be sustainable like five years ahead for people like us? Yeah, you know, I, I don't think Kickstarter is going away. It, it's a lot more difficult to get visibility there. You know, I know that, uh, like I said, when we went live, it was like 5,000 projects, now it's like 75,000 or so. I don't think it's going away. There, there, there's, a, there's a natural desire to want to help other people. And, you know, I, I think people ask me all the time, well, what happens if some of them go sideways? And I've backed 15, 20 projects. If three or four go sideways, in my heart of hearts, that's not going to dissuade me. Maybe if all 20 went, you might start to think that, but I don't think it's going to be the case. But I see products all the time. I mean, Castle Story went out last uh, week. They're up to six or $700,000. There continues to be titles week after week that are funding. It's just that not as many. Now, somebody said, oh my gosh, video games is the worst category. Only 25% of projects get funded. Are you kidding me? 25% is unbelievable. You know, that's a huge amount of products being funded. I can tell you what, 25% of pitches don't get funded, that's for sure. So, I, I think that the visibility uh, issues will be become more so. You know, the, the press have, you know, had complete fatigue hearing about another Kickstarter project. So, you really got to think about how you get attention outside of it, but I don't see it going away. There'll always be something that comes along, and, and there continues to be month after Oculus, we, Booyah, Ouya, you know, they, they keep coming. So, I, 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 and, and I would say one other thing, and they're also, of course, they're adjusting the Jobs Act bill so that people can now share equity. And so, already they started selling real estate online via Kickstarter, and the guy's letting you participate in profits, and the first one has already done like a half a million dollars right out of the chute. So, I think you're going to see a lot more creative ways of, 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 of working with people who want to get money. Hi, Brian. Um, I was just wondering, when you did your Kickstarter and you had all of that social news coming back at you, how did you manage all of that? Did you track it? Uh, did you keep lists of like a, a user request list or that sort of thing? How did you cope with that? What, you, you mean during, the, during the, 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 the campaign? Yeah, yeah. How do we track what now? So how did you track all the social uh, news and all the feedback that was coming back into the project? Like I said, it was like, it was like a wave that crashed over me. I mean, it was just morning, noon, and night. I mean, when I started, I had like, th I, I didn't really, I really wasn't much of a social media maven. I had like 300 followers, you know. By the end, I had like 7,000 or something, you know. Um, but, you, you, you know, it's it me and my guy just stay, I mean, as it was coming in, I mean, your interview requests were coming in, I mean, you had to keep shifting your priorities for where you should spend your time doing it. Uh, you know, it was, you know, I did a lot of interviews, you know, via, via just typing it in, other ones you do over Skype or whatever. You just, you've got to stay on top of every, you know, medium to high opportunity that comes in because, you know, it, it's, a real, it's a real marathon race. I mean, I was lucky to get out strong, but other people have got out not as strong, but they were able to get over the finish line because they stayed on top of it day after day. You know, I'll give you one little thing that I learned. One of the, the my biggest mistake I made was I had my Kickstarter ending at like se 7 in the morning. And that was a huge mistake because we didn't get that kind of the countdown closing party. You know, and you can do a large percentage of your, of, your, of your raise in that last 24 hours, and we were kind of denied that aspect of it. So that was the biggest mistake I made. Make sure you allocate yourself, because you, you don't want to do it on Monday either, because the press are, are likely to say, hey, you know, it's closing on Wednesday, two more days left, or whatever, right? But if you're ending at 5 in the morning or on a Monday, you don't, you, you don't get any benefit of that. Questions? Oh, over here. I, do you work with your own studio now? Did you interview all the people for having your own studio, or do you work with outsourced companies? And how do you do that? If so, are, are we working with outside developers? Yes. Yes. Uh, well, not on a project. I mean, we're working with outside developers for specific tasks to help us with this. Um, I, we might, you know, one of these days. Right now, I'm just laser focused on Wasteland. I mean, it, it's just got to be perfect. So I'm, I'm trying not to get too distracted. Uh, but but I think maybe one of these days we might. Hi. Uh, quick question. Do you need to be Brian Fargo or Tim Schaefer to make Kickstarter work? No. Again, you know, I, 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 you know uh, Castle Story, 
uh, just went out. They did a wonderful demo. I don't know what they're up to, but you know, they're six or seven hundred thousand. It was an unknown franchise, the Canadian group. I hadn't heard of them. So, and then there was another. There's a uh, an RTS that just went out also last week. Uh, th they're up to half a million, six hundred thousand dollars. So, so, you know, may maybe you need to have a name or a franchise to hit three million dollars. But, you know, I've been doing this for thirty years. So, you know, we, we all got to start somewhere and move our way up. You know, but so I, I think like these guys that that do. 600,000 or a million, if they knock it out of the ballpark, maybe they come back next and do two, and then they do three, and then they do 10. You know, so we all got to start somewhere. But, but I continue to see relatively unknown people that have pretty good demos. You know, a lot of the Kickstarter projects, you know, their, their, their videos have more to be desired, so I'm not surprised some of them don't fund. You know, you really got to think about what you're putting together. So, but yeah, I don't think so. I, I see it every day. Hi. Uh, I want to know, uh, would you feel when the game is out, and uh, if it's not a success, would you feel that those people were wrong, or you were wrong, or what, what would be the feeling? Because I think on Kickstarter you already have a, a success with funding your game, but what would be the feeling if it's not a commercial success? I, I missed the question. <laughs> so after it launches what now? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> do, you, do you still have the pressure of, to have a commercial success for your game? Or oh. it's, now that you have funding, it's okay? I mean, there's well, not a lot oh, of pressure. Well, I see, I see. Well, you know, one, one of the questions we get asked about a lot is, how are you going to get to the new gamer, you know, this new audience, right? And my honest answer to that is I don't care because I'm making a product for an audience and my backers for a very particular thing. But... It's not like I'm bringing back music from the 50s. You know, I, I'm hitting some, some things that are tried and true, like deep consequence and cause and effect, all these things. So I think it will do well. So is, is there, I mean, on one hand, I want it to do well beyond my core group because I want to be doing this for another decade. So that's, the, that's a different financial pressure is I want to keep doing it. But, but from a product production perspective, I don't have that pressure. You know, I'm, I'm going to just stay in sync with what these guys are expecting. Kind of as a follow-up to the sharing of information, do you feel obligated to share the information because of the Kickstarter success? Yes. Or would you have done that anyways? I don't know if I would have done it anyways, but I'm glad that I'm doing it, and I would never do it any other way now because it's really removed the surprises. I mean, if I've vetted, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the screenshot angles, the UI, the combat system, the music all the way through to the end, I mean, you're going to get the end and complain about what? You know, we're, we're, we're going to be in sync every step of the way for these major things. We're going to hold some stuff back for the interest of entertainment value. We're not going to give them everything, but all the, again, all the big stuff. So, so I would not do it any other way at this point. I think it's a super healthy process, uh, especially if you're confident and you know what you're doing. And there's a bit of a risk. You know, we went out early and we showed a screen, and I said, hey, I would never normally do this. You know, we haven't done post-processing effects. We don't have particle effects in, but we want to show you something in the interest of showing you something. And I'm glad I did it. You know, there was always a few people that didn't understand why this, why that, but 90% did. And the press was very good at putting it up with my caveat, which I appreciated, you know, because sometimes they throw it up, they say, this is it, you know, and of course that, that, that wasn't the exercise I was trying to do. So it's absolutely a bit of net positive for me, but I could see where... If it wasn't handled well, you could, you know, give a wrong impression, but uh, not the case for us. I'm afraid our time's up now. Is that it? Okay? Okay. Thank you. Thanks.